welcome to the Imaginator guest panel interviews. I'm here with Miss Abigail Keene. Welcome to Imaginary once again. It's my pleasure to be here. And Abigail is an award-winning both writer and beekeeper. Yes. And she writes the Josiah uh, Reynolds mystery series and the Last Chance for Love series. And a lot, a lot of people don't know, and they should, you write an epic fantasy series. Yes. And the name of that is? The Princess Mara Tales. All right, well, we got to, obviously we have a few questions for you. So let's start with, uh, tell us about the first story you ever wrote and how it involves, because one of the things I've always been interested in as far as being a beekeeper, uh, I mean, because you've won several awards for that, uh, particularly at the Kentucky State Fair and other places. So uh, tell me about how that all came about. I've always wanted to be a writer, and I started writing uh, little stories when I was in grade school. And the first story I wrote was Bobby Bobo gets baptized at Big Bone Baptist Church. I lived in uh, Big Bone, and uh, Bobby Bobo is a real person. And at that time, uh, country music, music was regionalized. It wasn't centralized in Nashville like it is today. And Cincinnati was a big hub for country western music, and they had the Midwestern Hayride show. And Bobby Bobo was a singer on that, and he had a big head called um, Log, uh, Long Dog um, Blues. And he came to our church, our little church at Big Bone Baptist Church, to be baptized. And my mother had a big crush on him. <laughs> and so we got to go and see Bobby Bobo get baptized. And so I wrote a little story about that. And then when I got older, I did it from an adult perspective. And I have written a whole series of autobiographical little short stories, which I haven't published yet, but I will. How did, how did your love of bees and getting into beekeeping start? Um, like Moses wandering in the uh, wilderness, I felt very compelled to be a beekeeper. I thought about them for years, and it was just something I felt compelled to do. And I think I was 32 when I ordered my first hive. They come through the mail. And I wasn't like a big time operator. I, I had to do it by myself and with some help from my husband. And so we could only do about 30 hives at a time. Now, Let's talk a little bit, because obviously we're here at a convention for writers, let's talk a little bit about your writing process. So for you, when you're writing your next novel, are you a daytime, a morning writer, evening writer? Do you have to have quiet? What's, what's the writing process I have to have absolute quiet. I get up at 4, okay. and I work till I get sleepy. And then I go back to bed, and then I get up, and then I, re I do busy work, like marketing, um, or editing, I'll go over, Peter will, uh, my husband's Peter, uh, he'll go over something and then um, I'll go over it again and then hopefully we get it ready for the editor. Uh, something I wanted to ask more on a fun side because I'm a, I'm a diehard Shaw and Holmes fan. And oh, so, I And so when uh, I met Abigail years ago and I found out she was a beekeeper, in Sherlock Holmes lore, although it may not necessarily be Arthur Carnival canon, he becomes a beekeeper. Of course, yes. there's the Beekeeper's Assistant, which is another uh, series that's out there. And current fiction, elementary on CBS, uh, he works with bees. Has anyone ever has anyone ever actually brought up to you the fact that you're a mystery writer who keeps bees and, and that Sherlock Holmesian? Yeah, no, you're the first one to say that. But I love Sherlock Holmes, and um, what a wonderful character. And the fact that someone has decided uh, that he will become a beekeeper when he retires, to me, was the logical thing for him to do because bees are very precise. Honey, uh, we're talking about honeybees. Honeybees. They're a different species. Uh, they do not react in a random pattern. There is specific actions to specific stimuli. And they see color, they taste, they have facial recognition. They uh, they know who their beekeepers are, and they smell. And there is a lore in which I write about beekeeping quite a bit in these mystery books, that when a beekeeper is injured or has died, someone has to go tell the bees. So you must go and stand in front of the hives and you say your beekeeper has fallen ill or your beekeeper is, you, the bees must be informed because there is a very close relationship between the bees and the beekeeper. And, and they're very precise. They're very precise on what they do, and I can see Sherlock Holmes be absolutely fascinating. Let me, we've got, do we have questions from the audience for Abigail? Right here. Uh, uh, but the question I wanted to ask you was, um, there were, I don't know, 
five or so things that he wanted to, to do to get, put you in the best possible position to succeed as a writer. I would have a marketing person. Marketing takes up 40% of my time. Um, I would love to hire a person that worked just for me, and, um, and that's all that they did. And they knew what they were doing. However, that's very unrealistic. Um, so that's like a dream. But that would be my number one thing. My number two thing was, would be that I would like a lot more time to write, uh, quiet time. No dogs, no people calling me, quiet time. Number three, I think it's essential that you reach out to your readership. I wish I had more time to reach out to them. All I can think of at the moment. Um, That's perfect. Well, I wish I could write faster. I tell you this, I'm a slow writer. In order to be successful, you need to put out four books a year. And I can't do that. I start with a very thin idea for a book. In mystery writers, you're really supposed to start with the ending first. But I never do that because I don't know what the ending is going to be. And sometimes I have... Uh, like some writers just do plot I like. James Patterson does a huge uh, plot I like. Well, why just write the book? But I have a very thin idea, and I start with it, but my characters decide where they want to go. They control me, I don't control them. And I think that lengthens the process. But I'm just not disciplined like that. I'm, I'm, I just can't write an outline and stick to it. They just seem to go wherever they want to go and have dialogue that I never intended them to do, and that lengthens the process and keeps that book from getting out correctly. Uh, marketing for books, do you find the most important? Your marketing, what, what, if you had, again, almost uh, top to bottom, what do you think is the most uh, advantageous avenue for book marketing for projects? Okay, we're talking about making the money. You can go ahead and sit down here. We're, we're talking about making money. Right. And we're not talking about the artistic, um, venue of, of writing. We're, we're talking about making money. In order to make money in this business, you better have a series. You better have three books. And do not publish them one six months and another six months. You better write those three books up front. And then you release them one week at a time. Then um, you better have your advertising ready to go, your website ready to go. And that's done even before you even publish those books. The most effective to me Forget about all this other BS. The most effective thing is the series, the three books, published in one week at a time. Well, Abigail, thank you very much for coming this morning. Let you get something else you would like to discuss. No, it's thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.